6.30, you'll call the meeting to order. And uh, it's a pleasure to welcome Mr. Lowry from the Recorder and Times and Ron Virgil from the South Grenville Beacon. It's the first time in many, many, many months uh, that we've been able to have some semblance of a public meeting and uh, to have the press present. And hopefully, things will improve on in. So the, this is the uh, June the 14th meeting of the Committee of the Whole, Administration and Finance for the Township of Edwardsburg Cardinal. And the time is 6.30. And uh, the meeting is a combination of a virtual meeting and a, and a uh, in, in council meeting with the, all members of council and being present at their desks. And I think a number of folks And I see the treasurer is joining us virtual public uh, join us. The public has the link to the meeting. I think or we publish the meeting after the after uh, after we record it, do not. So through the chair, we give the public the opportunity to request a virtual link to attend the meeting. We don't have it listed on our website due to security. Yeah. Uh, so they are people in advance of the meeting to request the Zoom link as well as we record it and upload it to YouTube later. That's the way we're working it. Okay, thank you very much. So with those few introductory remarks, uh, the chair's looking for a motion to approve the agenda for the committee meeting. So moved, moved by Councillor Cameron, seconded by Councillor Dillabaugh. Those in favor of the motion? Of the motion? The motion is carried. All right, I'm moving now to item three on the agenda, which is disclosure, excuse me, yes, disclosure of pecuniary interest and the general nature thereof. Uh, money. Yeah. No, no disclosures this evening, thank you. And item number four, business arising from the previous committee meetings. Now the meetings, the minutes were circulated uh, with the agenda package. Are there, is there any business arising from that meeting on what was the date? I guess that day that that meeting was made. Okay. Thank you, Mr. You have a question? I do. Go ahead. Uh, I was just wondering on the presentation from uh, Mr. and Mrs. Uh, De Winter. Has there been any, uh, any info update on, on that? Uh, through, through the chair, there hasn't been any substantial uh, progress uh, made from the, the time of the presentation, but we will be uh, looping back with them. Okay, uh, uh, thank you. And I have another uh, another one, Mr. Mayor, uh, and it's on page four of the minutes. And it, uh, under council inquiries and notices of motion, uh, Mr. Uh, concerns uh, raised by Mr. Kelly, has there been any, uh, any update on, on that situation? Through, through, through the chair from the township uh, and staff perspective, no, there's no additional follow up here. Okay, and the last one I have uh, is the uh, next two or three bullet points down, number nine, I guess the third bullet point regarding the health unit organizing a vaccination center uh, clinic, I should say, in uh, in Cardinal. Any, any word on that? Uh... Okay, so I'll just speak to that because when I reported that as part of my report, I was indicating that uh, the health unit had declined the invitations from Greenfield, no, from Giant Tiger and from Ingredient Center to organize the clinic. But then subsequent to that meeting, uh, Councillor Hunter had indicated that he was interested in uh, working with the health unit to organize the clinic. And uh, I made the <coughs> offer to the health unit following the meeting this past Friday. And I think Mr. Hunt, Councillor Hunter was contacted today. Yeah, I contacted the health unit and tech people were meeting with Mike Spencer at 2.30 today in the Greenland Center to certify the, the Wi-Fi puck up was good. I haven't heard back from Mike as yet, but uh, he, he clearly believed there. Any dates set for that? Got to to no dates yet, just that they're there. They told us before that they were, they were booked up with the clinics for two weeks. That was a week ago, eh, Mr. Mayor, that they told us so there wouldn't be any next week. I think it's like you're looking for around the first week of July or so, likely if we get one, but it appears they're, they're sending their tech people to look, so I 
the director on the list. So it's a matter of giving us the date so we can I can go ahead with the lodge and uh, other volunteers are getting lined up. And Mike has volunteered with the rec staff that they're going to set the building up once they approve it. So we can do it in pretty short order if we get the word. So. I think I think the uh, now that they they're doing their uh, uh, age twelve and up is, is pushing that group, and not all of that group has transportation, so that's why they're interested in doing these clinics, more of these clinics in smaller towns. Thank you. That's all I have, Mr. Mayor. Okay, so if there's no further questions or business arising from the previous meeting, I'm going to move on. Item number five on the agenda is delegations and presentations. We have none this evening. And item number six is discussion items we have none this evening. But item number seven is uh, action and information and items. We have a number in front of us. Uh, the first is the community grants uh, and a request from uh, Centennial 67 School concerning uh, funding reallocation. And that uh, briefing note comes with a recommendation uh, so, chair is open for discussion or a move and a seconder to action the recommendation. Okay, Mr. Bradley. Second. Are you moving, Mr. Bradley? Yes. Okay, Mr. Bradley is moving that we accept the recommendation. Councillor Cameron seconded. <coughs> for, is there any discussion on the recommendation? Hearing none, I'm about to call the question. Those in favor? Aye. Motion is carried. And this is just a simple little change of. Uh, usage for the grant money. Uh, item number 7B it concerns the RBC financing for the greater. And again, there is a recommendation in front of us. Chair is open for discussion and or move or second. Move motion. Councillor Hunter moving. I'll second. And Deputy Mayor Deschamps seconding. Further, is there any discussion on this item? It's a financing sure. item. Uh, no further discussion. I'm going to call the question on the recommendation. Those in favor? Aye. Motion is carried. And again, this has been talked about at several committees. So moving on uh, to item number 7C, which is the annual IT alignment report. And the IT alignment report comes to us, as I understand it, once a year. And uh, council will notice that it's a rather brief report because uh, the majority of our IT security requirements are, of course, confidential. And we don't want to be signaling to the broad general uh, those uh, steps that we're taking to keep our uh, to keep our systems secure. So you do have in front of you a, uh, a slight uh, background report just indicating to you um, what uh, steps have been taken in what areas. Is there any discussion on this report? I see that there's no recommendation with it. Is there any discussion? Hearing none, we'll, uh, I, I think I'll entertain you know, uh, a motion to uh, receive this report for information purposes. Do I have a mover to receive the report for information purposes? I move. I have Mr. Bradley moving. Does he have a seconder? Uh, Mr. Robertson. And those in favor? Aye. Uh, motion is carried. So it will be part of the record that we did receive the report. Thank you very much. So I'm moving on now uh, to item number 7D, which is the OPP detachment framework issue, which has been discussed at several previous committee meetings. Now coming to a head. Uh, thanks largely to the leadership shown by um, uh, Mayor Peckford in North Grenville, who uh, was able to convene a meeting of all of the mayors uh, in Grenville County uh, quite early on in this process. And I think everybody's aware of the main issue. The Solicitor General had asked for a, uh, a single board for the Grenville detachment. Uh, the mayors had asked for three boards. And uh, so here we have the just for submitting a three board proposal to the Solicitor General. And the uh, briefing note comes with a recommendation. The chair is open for discussion. Mr. Councillor Cameron. Yes, I'd just like you, uh, 
bring your attention on page 40 of this of this report. It's where the uh, where they're uh, doing the, uh, the service demands for the, each of the different uh, areas. And under Prescott on page 40, uh, it says where it's located. And it also says is located five kilometers from the international border crossing and will have policing related concerns specific to that crossing that are not otherwise addressed by the Canada Border Service. That also impacts our township as well, uh, Mr. Mayor. And I, I just, uh, I'm a little confused by that statement as to whether it's um, going to have more favorable um, um, situations for Prescott because of that statement. It should also include Edwardsburg Cardinal as well, seeing it is in our township. And, and I have to admit that I don't know them. We're good to go. Thank you. So uh, yes, but the uh, it, it certainly will be recognized that the international border is uh, within the township and will uh, certainly have some some impact. Thank you so much, uh, Mr. CEO. Thank you, uh, Mr. Chair. Are there any other questions, uh, Mr. Mayor? Yes. Yes. I just uh, keepers. I mean, the Solicitor General asked for one, and now we're getting three. three. No, we're so asking for three. They're asking for three. And the Solicitor General asked for one. And when you look at the map, I, I don't know, I have a hard time. I have a hard time looking at that map and saying Prescott needs one on their own. I really do. I mean, I'll, I'll go along with, with this, but I don't think, I don't know how far it's going to go when it gets up to the to the big boys because three different. Well, I, I'm looking at it actually from another point of view as well. And that is when you look at the population numbers. Oh yeah, that's right. I mean, Grand, North Grand Grand has 16,000. Three times as many. Our board will have 17,000 population. And Prescott will have 4,000 population. So uh, I don't want to comment one way or the other no, because uh, having attended those meetings, and they were quite adamant that they deserve to have their own board because of their his history, the historical background. Their police board goes back quite a number of years. And so uh, I think basically what um, and by the way, North Grenville was equally as adamant that they have their own, own board, da 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 da. I remember the first meeting. Yeah. So I think the decision of the mayor's basically was, well, all right, we will uh, we'll ask for three boards and leave the final decision to the solicitor general. So we can. So that that's what you have in front of us here tonight. Mr. So, mayor, yeah, uh, the CAO, you want in first. If I, if I could, Mr. Chair, uh, yeah, certainly one code uh, is to be submitted. But if, if you look at the um, OPP um, attachment board proposal process, section 67 requires that the, the Ontario Provincial Police Detachment Board or more than one OPP detachment board. So it does give some flexibility with respect to that. That's right, because we have two different, we have one in Prescott, one in North Bramble. That's right. I, I understand that, but I can go along with the two, but the three is kind of. Correct. With you on. Yes. Okay. Mr. Bradley and then uh, Deputy. Yeah, uh, I didn't attend any of the meetings, Mr. Mayor, but I'm just wondering that uh, 
the um, policing services has a fairly significant impact on our budgets and uh, was there any assessment made during this examination of potential um, impact on budgets in the three uh, districts? Okay, and I'll, I can respond to that. And the answer is on his own. Those uh, jurisdictions which have a board are responsible for the costs of that board. And, 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 there, and those boards come with a significant finance budget, budget finance costs. So Prescott has a board and they do, and they do, uh, they are subject to that cost. We don't have a board because we're a section 10 or something, and we just have a contract with the OPP. Now, the whole uh, uh, emphasis behind the new Police Services Act is that it's, it's, it's constructed in such a way that all municipalities that get policing services from the OPP will have, quote, access to a board or, quote, a membership component on a board, on a board. So that was what was behind it. And there was never any talk of uh, budgets or supporting the costs of board operations. So that whole question of financing has never been part of the, that's just a quick answer. Deputy Mayor. Well, I, that was uh, through the mayor. Uh, that, that was part of my question was costs associated. Do we, do we know, I mean, we're talking of um, the way I read it, a minimum of, of five people per board, uh, provincial appointees making up 20% and members of the public making up 20%. And, and I'm assuming that means that one member from Augusta, one member from Edwardsburg Cardinal, and a minimum of, of one from... Maryville. And uh, nice to know what the costs are. I mean, we don't have those numbers now. We a considerable amount of contract. It'd be nice to know uh, exactly. Of, of boards are, I mean, uh, three boards means minimum of 15, 15 people for a relatively uh, small population. I'm talking about 37,000 people total. I, I can't argue that what you're saying is, is correct. Yeah. yeah. Councillor Hunter. Well, I, I have no problem going on this. What, what they want to submit here, I, I can't really see that. This is the general's going. This is all proposal when you board for 4,000 people. That you got one detachment in Kingston would have twice as many yeah. people as what this whole board put together. And we have seen North Bramble, uh, the territory that they cover, and the size of being close to Ottawa, and, and the influx of people that maybe they might have a justification for it because they're growing, well, at one point there's something I tell them they're the fastest growing region in Ontario or something like that. So I can see them maybe fighting to get this, but as far as the rest of us go for the area there, and for me, I'd never fight for a board anyway, off and on over the years, for years, Edmundsburg was offered a chance to have a board and as we say, the financial cost, we turned it down every time because hey, we can call commander and we've always had a pretty good relation with them of getting stuff done and talking to them and they're always there they've had a lot of them over the years we had a lot of mayors i haven't heard any mayor say that they weren't open to picking up the phone and talking to them and they, they didn't always get the answer we wanted but they always talked to us and the board's going to be the same they're going to talk to them but attachment commanders are going to have the final say what they're going to do anyway so yeah it's their budget that they're spending so I don't know, I'm fine with going along with everything, but I don't think it's going on with this, so. But if it does, sorry, Mr. Mayor, you're interjecting, but if it does, then we have problems, I think. Why? Well, look, because of the financing aspect, and we haven't even looked at it. No, but at least we get to share finance with two other municipalities. <laughs> yeah. That's true. For one seat out of five members. For one seat. Well, now, th that's the other question that comes out here. I'm going to ask the CAO to speak to this. So on page 37 
of the report. Uh, right at the bottom of the page, it talks about the composition of the various boards. And it talks, the composition of the board in Prescott would be five members, the mayor, a council representative, a community representative, and two provincial representatives. North Granville would be seven members, the mayor, a council representative, three community representatives, and two provincial representatives. Now it says the composition of the board serving Augusta, Edwardsburg, Cardinal, and Merrick Bill would be composed members, but it doesn't say how those members would be structured. Is there a reason that was left out? Uh, well, uh, just to for if I can, Mr. Chair, just to provide a little bit of flexibility, what we would anticipate would be a a council representative. Uh, for, for, for each of the uh, municipalities. Three. And then a, a, a member from the public. From Three more. Each. So that's six. And then one provincial appointee. Right. It's, so. it, it, it's sort of the it, it's sort of the structure of the set. Okay. So any further discussion on this report? Or? Okay. Okay, Mr. Chair, just to, just to speak to the, to, to the uh, financing costs. If you look on page 41 and 42, it sort of gives you an indication of the operating costs of the current police services board. So, for instance, with North Granville, it, the operating costs associated with that police services board is about 20,000, including the honorariums, conferences, uh, professional memberships, etc. For Prescott, it's around uh, around 9,000. Over is in the nine thousand dollar so or the nine thousand dollar mark. So we're we're probably looking someplace between the ten to twenty thousand. Probably somehow divide it um, reasonably equally between the three uh, municipalities. Right, and of course the other two, Augusta has a board now, Correct. and so does Merrickville. So those uh, members that sit on that board on those two boards now have had what I would call the basic training uh, required of a, of a police board member. Uh, we would, of course, I think, have to incur our, our, our costs for our members because we don't have anybody that has had any experience on a police services board. So we might have some initial training costs, but I, I'm, thank you very much for pointing out those costs. It sort of gives us an order of magnitude here. Is there any further discussion on this? If there's no further discussion, the chair is looking for a mover and a seconder to action the recommendation on page 31, which will send, which will endorse this proposal in assuming that it's endorsed by all of the other six municipalities, six, five municipalities, uh, it will be submitted to the Solicitor General on the, uh, prior to the June 28th deadline. So. Chair's looking for a mover and a second. Do we, before we go any further, do we, at that point, depending upon what the soul gen sends back, do we have option to to, to back away at, at that point if we don't like what the compositions of the board and the costs will be? Or, or is it once we put this forward, we're in, and no matter what the cost and the composition are, and then we just live with it? Good question, and uh, I can't answer it because I don't know what the process would be if the Solicitor General turns it down. I have no idea what the process would be. What are the implications if we turn it down? We don't support those. Well, it, it, well if we turn it down, uh, there will be a major problem meeting uh, the Solicitor General's uh, June 28th deadline. And by the way, the June 28th deadline was an extension of a previous deadline, which I think was June the 1st. Uh, June, June the 7th, Mr. Chair. June the 7th. So, you know, I mean, I've discussed this a, enough times that I'm hoping that we will approve this tonight because I think I've explained the reason why we're kind of, quote, going along with it uh, in the interest of neighborliness, I guess you could say. Uh, and, and I mean, we're basically kicking the can over to the Surgeon General and saying, here's what we want, you decide. So, I mean, I'm, I'm hoping that we'll pass this because I think we're better to go to the Solicitor General 
with a proposal rather than not to submit a proposal at all. So I have Deputy Mayor uh, Deschamps moving the recommendation. Is does he have a seconder? Yes. Uh, Councillor Cameron seconder, and I saw that Councillor Hunter had his name up as well. But take Councillor Cameron. Uh, any further question? Those in favor? Opposed to any? Give you a chance, Mr. Bradley. Opposed well, I'm opposed to it. This is another level, level of bureaucracy as far as I'm concerned. <laughs> okay. I'll show it carried with one uh, one one in opposition. Whatever. Okay. Uh, so it's now fair, I'm at... Uh, the getting rid of it. Right. <laughs> yeah. Uh, where am I here? I'm now at seven uh, e, which is uh, discussion or consideration of an in, of an interim control bylaw for the industrial park expansion lands, and uh, this uh, issue arrives on our agenda because of the situation that we had at the last meeting, where uh, you know we had already indicated our industrial park expansion lands and signaled those lands in uh, I think it's the county official plan also in our draft zoning bylaw as it's coming forward am I right yeah. and so now uh, at our last meeting we had uh, two representatives asking us to take two of those lots in the industrial park expansion lands and convert them to residential, uh, which of course would be at cross purposes with the whole initiative. So you have a report from uh, Novatech in front of you, along with a recommendation. And uh, I think the big note for is open to discussion. Deputy Mayor. I think, um, you know, I'd certainly be. They don't take an interim control bylaw lightly. I mean, it's it's a bit of a sledgehammer, but I mean, thinking back to all the discussions we had through uh, CDC uh, developing the new official plan, um, it, knowing that we changed this area to future industrial through that, that official plan, um, I think you've identified an area that that when we were doing that, uh, discussion at CDC, we, we kind of missed, I think we, we missed the mark in that the dual bylaw um, with the official plan at that time. And I see this as, I guess, a way of rectifying something that we should have done a while back. And, and we're, you know, we're a year and a half or two years down the road, um, maybe correcting something that I as chair of CDC should have uh, caught at the time. So uh, I'll, you know, I'll definitely, uh, I do think it's a bit of a sledgehammer, but uh, it's something that we missed and we should have, should have done back then. So, I'll support. Well, I, don't th I think you're being too hard on yourself. Well, <laughs> because, I mean, certainly by identifying it in the county official plan, we signaled yeah. far and wide to the public what our intentions were. Fair enough. Uh, any further discussion on this uh, briefing open? Uh, Chair is looking for a mover and a seconder to action the recommendation. I have Deputy Mayor Deschamps moving. Does he have a seconder, please? No seconder. Councillor Dillavaugh seconding. Further discussion? Hearing none, I vote to call the question. Those in favor? Aye. Motion is carried. So now, as I understand it, um, and I'll just to clarify this uh, with the CAO. What this is basically telling us is that we should get a, um, a study initiated uh, as quickly as possible, and that's we can put the interim control bylaw in place. So my question is, can the two things be done concurrently at the council meeting at the end of the month? Uh, so to, to, to the chair, it can be done at the special uh, council meeting uh, this evening. Oh, sorry. Yeah. Yes. So, okay. so, so, uh, council is required to pass a resolution yeah. to, to, to undertake a, a, a planning uh, policy study of that work, which, uh, which will be on there. And then, and then the bylaw will 
I actually instituted the internet effective basically uh, in June 14th. Right. Yeah, thanks very much. I, I, I read that today and I'm quite it didn't stick with me at all, but I see it is on that special counsel at <laughs> I do, I do want you to know that I read the packages. <laughs> there, 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 there's a lot of activity uh, going on. <laughs> All right, so now I'm moving to item number 7F, which is the site plan control agreement for Prismian. And uh, so uh, again, we have a briefing mode in front of us and the long, um, let's Sort of adjustment uh, back from the planner and uh, and from their uh, from the Prismian consultants. So, chair is open for discussion on this item. This is an amendment to the Prismian site plan control agreement. I see no discussion. I'm just more worried about implications for law. Okay, so if there's no discussion, the chair is looking for a mover to action the recommendation, which is to make a recommendation. Go ahead. Does this uh, site plan and control agreement affect the other work that the mayor was doing on for the property transfer here? Good question. We're, yeah, and so just to, revert, uh, to review, we we have. Um, we've sort of put our request, the Prismian, kind of on hold uh, to see how this project would unfold. And I must say that it's unfolding quite neatly uh, with quite a number of acreages left over along County Road 2. However, it's sort of been flagged to me that this is just the first of what might possibly be two projects and uh, that they are possibly uh, going to um, withhold a final decision on our request uh, pending further developments, if I can put it that way. No, still alive. In that case, I'm prepared to Recommendation. Okay, Councillor Hunter is moving the recommendation. Does he have a second? Yes. Yeah. Deputy Mayor Deschamps is seconding. And this is a recommendation that the committee recommend that council adopt a bylaw to amend the existing site plan control agreement for 137 Commons Drive as attached. I'm about to call the question on the motion. Those in favor? Motion is carried. So that recommendation will go to the special council meeting, which will follow this meeting. And so that deals with that. And now I'm at item number eight on the agenda. Item number eight on the agenda is council inquiries or notice of motion. Are there any inquiries or notices of motion to come before this meeting? Mine isn't. Um an inquiry or notice of motion, but I do want to um, make note uh, of the fantastic work that is going on on the, the waterfront in Cardinal. Um, the uh, NAPS is doing a, a wonderful job, a uh, very clean job, very efficient job, and, and they're moving along uh, very well. And um, I think we complimented the staff on having the docks in, but it is uh, following or echoing Councillor Dilbaugh's email earlier this week. Uh, staff has the area looking
So ready? So Councilor Cameron. Yes, uh, thank you. As, as as I was saying that uh, on my uh, on my daily walk uh, throughout that area, the uh, that I've come in contact with cannot wait for that uh, that trail to be uh, opened and ready and ready to go. Everybody's dying. Including myself. Oh, that's great. Any other comments, Councillor? Well, I haven't got too many comments. I have a couple of questions. Uh, one is, uh, I'm down there too, and I, I spoke for uh, clerk about getting a hold of Mike, uh, and I just wanted to give the mayor to uh, clerk. Uh, did we get a comment on our our dead maple tree down there? They're going to get it taken down. Uh, through the clerk, I did advise. Uh, the manager of Parks Recreation Facilities. I have not heard a tip for that. So, so, so yeah. So through, through, through the chair, that's that's in the works. Okay. And my second comment is, uh, I looked over a proposition of what we're doing down there, and I think we neglected a major thing in there that we should have been doing when we we're doing this walkway, and. Uh, us to try to find in the money level we're down there working is the parking lot in front of the front of the boat launch there i'd like to really see that graded up and some extra i don't think we can afford to pave it this year but i'd really like to see the it squared up there and the grass cut out and, and widened out a little bit there that was there better. there and, and gravel put in there and that led it up better definition of the edge it's yeah, fine and, and it's rocky in there. You see boats coming out there, there and if they come out a little fast, they bounce and, and you see them towing them over the pit, small fishing boats laying them back up on the ramps there to tie them down. So it's pretty rough in, in there. And uh, one other complaint I had too is that uh, at the end of the boat launch going in there, I've been told by two or three of the fishermen that our, our rocks six inch rock that we put in at the end there, gave me that might have been put in at the end to settle down and now the, the water's so low that we're back and over the end of the cement to get the boat fully launched and, and there's about a six inch or more drop there now. Well, I'd like to really see some that corrected right away. Now we're going to grab or something put in there and level before they drop. It's going to affect the end of the cement there if they keep dropping off and down there, so. So, so, um, I'll just put the put the question to uh, the CAO. Uh, is the CAO aware of these uh, complaints that Councillor Hunter is uh, addressing right now? I know that uh, I've heard, I've heard the same comments. I don't know whether I can't remember whether I passed them on or not. But. So through, through, through the chair, uh, certainly uh, aware of the uh, of the tree um, and uh, part part of the. Uh, Part of that pathway was uh, to sort of uh, better define uh, that parking lot. So, Square it up. Well, yes, pro probably not to the to the extent uh, talking, but we can certainly uh, we we can certainly look at to see what we can do within the, uh, with uh, for the end of it. Uh, I was uh, I, I was not aware of the uh, of the uh, drop off. Boat launch, uh, but it will certainly uh, look into that. Uh, it's quite noticeable, and it is at least a six inch in the trailers. You can see the drop. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, really, you don't have to go that far. Are there any other uh, inquiries or notices of motion? Hearing none, I'm going to move on. And so, item number nine is the mayor's report. So, I don't have a lot to report tonight. My main interest. Uh, through this process has been to get the uh, site plan agreement for uh, Brisbane in place and I want to thank the staff for working on that and uh, our, also our consulting firm uh, Novatech. Um, I know that uh, Mr. Edwards will be here shortly. I've asked him to come at 7.15. Uh, I was hoping that uh, he would come in time for the discussion at the committee level but that's already passed us. And uh, if the clerk is telling me we can't start the public meeting, the special meeting of the municipal council until eight, uh, then it looks like we're gonna have a few minutes here of uh, blank time. Uh, 
but we will deal the uh, bylaw for the site plan control agreement for Prismian in the special council meeting. And as soon as we've dealt with that item, I'm going to call a short adjournment just for a photo op uh, with uh, Mr. Edwards. Uh, I'm quite excited about the, what they're doing. Um, uh, uh, Mr. Edwards has a press release that he'll bring with him that will further explain the extent of their involvement uh, with this new new uh, regional distribution center. And um, I don't want to say more until until he arrives. Uh, other than that, uh, I think the only other thing to report in public, and I've already reported it uh, in my mayor's report that went out last night, was the fact that um, our natural gas extension and expansion project uh, failed to find funding under phase two of the uh, government's uh, extension and expansion uh, program for natural gas. Now, uh, let me put it this way. The government had put $230 million into the program. Yes, $234 million into the program. There were 210 uh, submissions. Well, Councillor, do you want to get that just in case it's Mr. Edwards at the wrong door? Sounds like it. Sounds like it, yeah. Good evening, Mr. Edwards. Welcome to the council meeting. Thank you. So, so Mr. Edwards, just to bring you up to date with where we are, we're just finishing the committee meeting and your site plan control agreement did receive the recommendation from the committee to proceed to council. And uh, we're just gonna wind up this committee meeting shortly. Uh, but unfortunately we can't start our council meeting till the, until the advertised time, which is eight o'clock. So be a few minutes of uh, blank spots in here. So anyway, I'm just gonna finish up my report on the natural gas extension and expansion project. Uh, and uh, so there was $230 million allocated, 121 municipalities submitted projects totaling 2.6 billion. And only 43 of those projects were funded and ours was not one of them. Now, uh, the Ontario Energy Board uh, has been slightly restructured by the Minister of Energy. There's a new chair in place and, and there are some new members being appointed to the board. Uh, and the hope is that the board will change its way to checks. Uh, I've spoken to Enbridge a couple of times since we knew that we were not a funded project to see exactly uh, what their thoughts were going to be and uh, was pleased to find out that they, in anticipation that all of their submitted projects would not be funded, they had already created what they called a special review team. And the special review team is going to be looking at those projects which did not find funding. Now, they did receive funding for some 27 of the pro projects that they had submitted. So they're going to be a busy company. All of those projects are scheduled to get underway before uh, 2025. So many of them will be starting this year, uh, quite a number starting in 2022 and 2023. In the meantime, this special review uh, team is going to be looking at projects such as ours, which I am told was very close to being a standalone project not requiring government funding. It can be reworked by some means. There is a possibility that we don't go back to the third round of funding 
Enbridge would go directly to the Ontario Energy Board for leave to construct. Now, leave to construct is just a, a an indication that the Ontario Energy Board has reviewed the proposal and has reviewed Enbridge's submissions for how the capital costs will be recovered. And the basic criteria is that existing customers of Enbridge are not expected to pay any of the capital costs of new projects. There's been some loosening of that criteria with this round in phase two, and it can be loosened additionally. And one of the things I want to point out to Council is that one of the concepts that has been floated is the following. When these, when these, when the pro forma financing for the recovery of these costs is submitted by Enbridge, they have to indicate to the Energy Board, we're going to provide gas pipeline to 400 houses, 400 new houses. Our estimate is that 65% or 50% or 40% of those new houses will join the system and contribute this much to the capital cost. And the question which will now come up for debate on a very high level across the province is whether or not municipalities submitting proposals in conjunction with Enbridge are prepared to pass mandatory hookup bylaws. Now, mandatory hookup bylaws are very simple in concept. The municipality passes a bylaw which says that if the gas line goes by your property, you either take or pay. You either join it or you pay as if you had joined it and we bill you for it. We already have those kinds of bylaws in place in Ontario for sewer and water projects that are funded with provincial money. We put them in place way back in the early 80s in Red Lake. And if the, if the pipes, the sewer and water pipes went by your property, you join, mandatory. And it was only the passage of that bylaw which enabled us to access the provincial grant money. That issue will now become an issue as it, re as it uh, reflects on uh, natural gas. So just flagging that. And, and this is a public meeting. I want to flag it as heavily as I can for the public because it will become an issue in the public arena. So that's basically the mayor's report. Uh, I'm going to proceed to question period to see if there is a, any questions in the question period. And we don't have a closed session. So floor is open for chair uh, questions from uh, the, the gallery. Generally refer to the press first, any member of the press with questions. Mr. Lowry. Uh, in, your, in your submission to Enbridge, what was the area that you, was, you wanted them to serve? Okay, well that project was called County Road 2 Spencerville. And the project basically provided new pipeline from, um, uh, um, I gotta get the name of the road on the east side. Blair. No, no, not Blair, further east than Blair. Empire Hannah. Empire Hannah Road. So it would provide new pipes from Empire Hannah Road all along County Road to as far as Grenville Park. Grenville Park already, and west of Grenville Park already has servicing. Then the second part of the project, and it was a two, was a two component project was to take the pipe from the Enbridge substation on County Road 18 and it would go north along County Road 18 to the Weir Road and then up the Weir Road as far as County Road 21 and then east on County Road 21 and service all of the village of Spencerville. That was the project. Plus part of Augusta, right? Mr. Pardon? Plus Plus part of Augusta, right? Yes, as it went north along the Weir Road and County Road 18, it would take all of Augusta side roads. So it was a good project. I think it would have hooked up around totally around 700 homes. And they're still interested in the project. As I say, it was very, very close to 
uh, working on its own. And I don't know, because I wasn't privy to it, although we worked very difficult, very hard with them to get the project defined, to have the project, um, they did the initial estimates, class D estimates for costs, but what I wasn't privy to is what percentage of the, uh, the of the homes that would see the pipe go by, what percentage of those homes were prepared to join. And we did a survey here in our township. And as a matter of fact, we did several, including door to door, where we had people sign letters of intent to join. And I think we submitted those as part of the Enbridge package. So it was a good submission. It was a complete submission, but just didn't cut the mustard when there's 210 applying for 2.6 billion and there's only 230 million up for funding. Any other questions? From, uh, yes. Um, Kel, we're talking about a, a trail and I'm still playing catch up from the gap between newspapers and I haven't been here. Could you give me a little bit more information about where that trail is located? Absolutely. It's uh, yeah, on the waterfront uh, area of uh, Cardinal going from the east part of Legion Way to the uh, what we refer to as Richardson's Point to the west. Mm -hmm. uh, it goes past the Legion, it goes past the water treatment plant, and it goes past the pavilion canteen. Uh, so that area is classified as phase one and phase two. And uh, phase two will have a, uh, um, an asphalt type uh, hardtop. And phase one, which is to the east from the Proximate Legion to the east, is going to be hardback uh, type of gravel or stone dust. And uh, so it's right along the waterfront at the, uh, at the, uh, the what we refer to as Legion Way. Mm -hmm. Okay, thank you. Okay. Any other? So hearing none, I'm about to, uh, we have no closed session. I'm about to ask for the motion to adjourn the committee meeting. Do I have a mover to adjourn the committee meeting? I have Deputy Mayor Deschamp, does he have a second to this? Councillor Cameron, non-debatable, those in favor? Motion is carried. So.